even though we've been a lot less generous in how we measure middle class. So I'm not saying like the African Development Bank that it starts at $2 a day per person. Um, it's still quite clear that the middle class is growing. If you isolate it from the data and you look at it on its own, that's how it would look in terms of the number of households in our middle class in these 11 African economies. So in 2000, roughly two and a half or two million households in the middle class in these markets. Today, about seven and a half million. So clearly, there's been a more than tripling in the size of the middle class in these markets, and that's compelling. The projections out to 2030 are incredibly problematic on a number of levels. We've taken linear projections. We've looked at what we expect for the next five years of GDP growth. We've looked at catalysts for growth in Mozambique, such as gas coming on board and increased coal revenues and so on. We, of course, have country analysts for each of these markets, and we've tried to layer the data we've had with that. But it creates an idea of where these markets are going, and there's no guarantee, but it, it clearly just provides some trajectory to say how big might these economies be in terms of their middle class in 15 years' time. Now, the important thing here is to pause and look at 7.5 million. And many of the media said, fantastic, 7.5 million, triple, tripling of the middle class. South Africa today has between 4 and 5 million middle class households, according to our measure. So we have a population of 50 million people, and we have about 4.5 four million middle class households. These 11 economies have 520 million people, and they have only, uh, only 7.5 million middle class households. So they have an additional 2 million middle class households for an additional 470 million people. So it already creates the idea that South Africa's scale, which is quite a, a, a clear assumption based on the performance of South African companies and how they've not necessarily yet been able to see the same performance in these other markets. If you include the lower middle class, that goes up to 15 million households today and about 40 million out to 2030. The growth is quite clear. I think much of the growth has already been experienced because of the base effect from 2000. So I don't think that we're going to carry on growing at the same level, but it is clearly quite compelling. We expect in the next 15 years, without exception, more middle class households will be added in these economies than have been added in the last 15. So Nigeria has seen 3.5 million new middle class households since 2000. We expect they'll see about 7 million between now and 2030. So between now and 2030, Nigeria will add more middle class households than South Africa has as a total. And that's the other side of the story. It's not that big now, but expecting it to grow at a similar clip to what it's been experiencing lately, the consumer opportunity in 2020, 2025, and 2030 will become very compelling. And companies that are engaged and entrenched in these markets will, will reap those rewards. Nigeria is, of course, towering. I've already mentioned that, not just because it has a big population, but because on per capita basis, it's far richer than all of the other economies in the study, with the exception of Angola. However, and this is the Kenyan angle to my report, uh, I've isolated the middle class, and it looks great. But if you look at the middle class in comparison to total households, it's dwarfed. So out of 110 million households across these 11 economies, roughly, 90, well, roughly 85% of them, 94 million households, are low income. Um, and half of those, at least, are, are in what we would call in South Africa LSM1, exceptionally marginalized, absolute poverty, unable to, to barely cling to survival. So there's a very clear uh, need to understand that dynamic rather than just extracting the middle class and looking at, at it in isolation. There's obvious exceptions. Angola has a per capita GDP of almost $7,000. For any multinational, that puts it on the S-curve of where they would expand their operations. Whereas all of these other markets, Ethiopia has a per capita GDP of $570. Uh, so clearly dramatic and, and very large discrepancies between these markets, where roughly uh, two in, in uh, sorry, 20% of Nigerian or Ghanaian households are in the lower middle class or the middle class. 99% of Ethiopian households are low income. By 2030, we expect 97% will be. So a very marginal growth out of that band. And finally, East Africa performs quite poorly. So some of the Africa rising narrative has really attached itself to the idea that democratic East Africa is at the forefront of, of the real income gains, the real GDP growth and, and experiences that we're finding in the markets. That's not necessarily untrue, but it's clearly not registering in the growth of the middle class. The middle class story is a Zambia, Ghana, Angola, Nigeria story, rather necessarily than a Kenya, Tanzania, Uganda story. Two problems, population growth has arguably been too significant, too large there for them to account to, to allow income elevation at the same level as the population is growing. But more importantly, they've not until very recently had significant access to natural resources to exploit and, and extract and, and, and export over a long period of time, which does add, of course, over time 
to, to the national wealth of these economies. That's starting to change. Tanzania, Mozambique have natural gas, Uganda and Kenya have oil, but it's nowhere near the scale and size of West and Central African deposits. But what's more interesting for me is what's happening within the low-income band in East Africa. So there's two types of shifts. There's the one that's low income moving into middle class. That's not happening in East Africa, not to a great extent. But what is happening is people moving within the low income from LSM 1 and 2 into 3 and 4. And the real bulk of that shift is happening in Ethiopia and Kenya particularly.